Hi, hello everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, I must immediately say I'm not really a Bunuel expert, so already I'm a fraud, uh, and I certainly could not answer the question, who is Louise Bunuel? Um, but, and I, I hope that a number of you have seen other films in the season, because of course what we're seeing tonight is Bunuel's last film, uh, which came out in France in 1977. Uh, and in fact, I remember seeing it when it came out. Uh, of course, I've seen it since then, but um, it's very much, I think, a film of its time and um, of the late 70s. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything uh, by saying that it's the story of a late middle-aged man uh, played by Fernando Rey, who acts as Bunuel's alter ego in a number of Bunuel films, as you know, and who's obsessed with a young woman, Conchita, uh, and who torments him and tempts him. Um, and on the trip from um, Seville to Paris, he tells uh, his fellow passengers on the train um, the story of his relationship with Conchita. Um, and it's a, a story, uh, a film um, based on a very famous book by Pierre Louis called La Femme et le Pantin, literally means the, the woman and the puppet. Um, and uh, I checked on, and there are, there, in fact, there have been eight adaptations of this book in film. Uh, so this is one of eight. And the, the other two very famous ones are The Devil is a Woman um, by Joseph von Sternberg in 1935 with Marlene et Dietrich and uh, a film with Brigitte Bardot uh, directed by Julien Duvivier called La Femme et le Pantin, the title of the book, uh, and uh, which unlike The Devil of, of Is a Woman is not a masterpiece, but uh, it tells you something I think already interesting about uh, why this the appeal of this particular story. Um, and so if you know some of these other films, you might also want to compare Bunuel's version. Um, one more thing to say as a, as a context, um, I realized that this was Bunuel's last film, of course, but it's also the first one he did after Franco died. Um, of course, he made it in France, and you may think that it has nothing to do with the film, but I think it's interesting to keep that in mind. Um, to look at, as you'll see, it's very much a late Bunuel film. It's kind of very classic mise-en-scene, impeccable bourgeois interiors, uh, where, of course, erotic transgression takes place. Um, we have fetish objects, we have anti-clerical jokes, um, all the things you expect of a Bunuel film are there in that film. Um, and, and one of the fun of Bunuel's films is, of course, to think about those objects. There's a, a big bag, um, there's a shawl that's being repaired, and so on. So to, to kind of think about the symbolic function of those objects is, is part of the pleasure of a Bunuel film. And another point I wanted to make is to think also about the title, um, Cet obscure objet du désir, that obscure object of desire. Um, Bunuel said, I found a quote where he says that he liked using he said, a totally unexpected word or group of words which opens up a new perspective. And for him in this title, the word was object. So I'll come back to that in, in a second, but I think it's another thing to think about, about the object, and also why is that object so obscure? Okay, um, this is a short introduction. I'm just going to make three points, um, which are more like a sort of classic teacher saying about asking you to think about while you watch the film. The first one is about Conchita, the woman, uh, that object of desire, obscure or not, um, and. Um, Conchita, um, and again, I'm sure I don't spoil anything by saying that she's a double character. She's a double character who's played by two actresses. Um, and she's, in a way, embodies a double patriarchal stereotype of the virgin and the whore, the angel and the demon. Uh, and I think the fact that she's played by two actresses is really interesting because in typical Bunuelian fashion is both, as he said, completely arbitrary. He decided because Maria Schneider was going to play the part and that didn't work out. So he used Carole Bouquet, French actress, uh, young woman then, uh, her first role, and uh, practically, and then a uh, Spanish actress called Angela Molina. Uh, and in one sense, you can sort of play around and I think that's what Bunuel wants to think about 
Carole Bouquet plays the cool, virginal, uh, uh, neat, bourgeois French young woman. And Angela Molina is the flamenco dancer, uh, hot-tempered, Spanish, exotic. Um, but both are one woman. And Binuel was insistent that he used them completely arbitrarily and that we shouldn't look for a meaning of their particular appearance at particular points in the film. But of course, you may disobey him and think about what that might mean. Um, uh, but it's interesting that uh, both were dubbed by the same French actress so that they would have the same voice. And incidentally, um, some of you may recognize the voice, but um, Fernando Rey is dubbed by Michel Piccoli. So you probably recognize his voice uh, when you hear it. So uh, the question I think about Conchita, and there have been oodles of things written about uh, women in Buñuel and women in that film in particular. Is she a powerful figure who dominates this kind of uh, wreck of a man who is a um, uh, masochistic male hero? Or is she uh, a, just an objectified fantasy who has no existence outside his desire and his thoughts? So I think that's um, you know a lot of th to things to think about about this particular female character. The second point I wanted to make, which I think is really interesting in the film, is that it's very self-reflexive. The very fact that uh, it's told as a story told by a character to a group of people, so that Fernando Rey. Um, so Bunuel's alter ego filters the story for us to a group of people. And as you will see, I won't spoil, but they are very carefully chosen to represent the kind of particular uh, members of the audience, you might say. Um, and so in, we could see his story as trying to convince the audience of his particular version of the story. The images and the sounds uh, in this, essentially the film is a set of flashbacks, are his vision, our Bunuel's vision, of apparently objective reality. So I think there's a lot to unpack here and it's really interesting to think about it. Are we frustrated in our vision? Uh, are we voyeurs? Um, the, all these uh, particular questions I think come to mind. Okay, so Conchita, and then uh, a very self-reflective film. And the, the last thing I wanted to say um, had to do with a set of terrorist attacks that takes place in the film, just bomb attacks, uh, which are never explained, never attributed, apparently random. Uh, of course, they're not. Um, and... Um, again, one of the interesting, f fun things to do with this film is to think about what what is the meaning of those terrorist attacks. Are they an allegory of the war between the sexes, for example? Uh, are they a metaphor of the violence of desire or the violence of the effect of um, this woman, Conchita, on Mathieu, the name of the character played by Fernando Rey? Um, are we encouraged by the film to see a connection between this woman, her effect, his desire, and the violence? Or are these completely, again, an arbitrary set of occurrences? Um, are they to do with Bunuel's surrealist past? Are they to do with the situation in Spain at the time? I think um, this is it's very typical, again, that the film, in a typical fashion for Bunuel, but also uh, a lot of art films, leaves it open for us to decide, for us to think about. Um, so um, I'm not going to give any answers to my question. Um, there is not, I understand there's no uh, formal discussion afterwards, but um, if people want to talk in the bar afterwards, I'm very happy to do so. And we can uh, perhaps begin to answer these questions. And I hope you enjoy the film. Thank you. <laughs>